The video you're about to see might have to do with music theory. Don't worry, it's way simpler than you think, I promise you. Let me prove it to you with my free music theory DNA course, which is gonna put you on the right path to learning those hard to understand concepts in a super easy and healthy way. Check out guitarinfusion.com, enter your best email address. I'll be sending you that free course right away. But for now, let's get into the video. Okay, <laughs> we are going to talk today about control, controlling the output of our music and organizing our thoughts on the fretboard so that that outcome is exactly the intent. The intent should match the outcome. Grab your guitar. That's coming up. My name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players like us find our voice on the instrument, develop that voice to tell our own personal musical story. And today we're going to talk about organizing our thoughts on the fretboard. It's going to be a little more scholar than the typical lessons where we're talking about connecting you know, the inner voice with the output. Today it's going to be a little more organizational, but it's going to be very helpful, I think. We're going to talk about a concept or an exercise that uh, was shown to me a long time ago. It's called chord scales. And chord scales basically aims to match, organize your thoughts and match chord types with scales and arpeggios, which are basically chords that are broken, played one note after the other. And for that, we're going to split our fretboard into equal sections. When I learned this stuff, that was a uh, one of the first guitar lessons that I took, it was, it was a long time ago, um, maybe 25-ish years ago or so, it was introduced to me as chord scales, but really now I understand that this was the caged system explained to me. And the caged system can uh, scare people and can turn people off because the name caged, even though it has nothing to do with it, sounds like a cage. And you might think that, oh, that's gonna really put me in a cage and not be free. The point here is not to teach you how to play using strictly the cage system. The point is to make that connection, organizing your thoughts on the fretboard. Now, that doesn't mean that you're only going to play in one position. It's not what it is at all. But it's just going to help you visualize different key things on the fretboard that are going to help you keep track of where you're going and build your story in the most efficient way possible. Before we dive in, we should talk a little bit about the caged system, which was covered extensively on this channel, but just a quick reminder, caged is spelled C-A-G-E-D. These five letters correspond to the open chords, the open C chord, the open A chord, G, E, and D. Now, where a lot of people get stuck is that they think that the caged system just means that whenever you're playing over a C, key or a C chord, you need to use that C uh, position. That has nothing to do with that. The, we need to go a little further. If we look at these five chords, C, open C, open A, open G, open E, and open D, we're going to extract from these chords some characteristics. These characteristics have to do with where is the root within the, this chord and where is the chord built? Is it built towards the neck or towards the bridge? And basically, that's going to give you what the caged system is. It's a way to organize your thoughts on the fretboard. And, and we find quickly that any musical element that we play, whether it's a chord or a lick or an arpeggio, 
is uh, going to fit one of these five different uh, key elements, C-A-G-E-D. Again, this is not a lesson on the cage, but that's what the cage system is. I will refer to a full lesson on the cage system on this channel. With that out of the way, we know that the caged system is going to help us organize our fretboard. And we can split our fretboard into five equal sections, which are going to correspond to that C-A-G-E-D uh, system. Now, this is where I want us to go. When you are playing, when you improvise, and when you work on this kind of thing, you need to be aware of where the root is. Which chord are you playing over? And the root is going to... Is going to basically give you a visual representation of, of where the chord is placed on the fretboard. So if I'm playing something in G minor, I'm playing in this position here, I've got a G here, low E string, third fret, I've got a G minor chord in that area of the fretboard, most players are going to play this, minor pentatonic scale. Well, that fits one of the caged positions, and uh, when we're playing that position, it's easy to know where the, the root is because it's it's uh, the first note that we play within that position. That's why a lot of players gravitate around those kind of positions, first positions. The problem with that, staying in the same zone of the fretboard, same position all the time, is that fingers tend to take over in our music. And um, they, they, they like their comfort zones. And when fingers take over, they're always going to go towards the things that they have done in the past. And if you're not in control of your fingers, your music is always going to sound the same. It's going to sound the same because your fingers are taking over and fingers like comfort zones. That's, that explains why in 99% of uh, the solos that you hear out there, at some point you'll hear this. That kind of thing in one variation or, or the other. It sounds great. And it's almost expected to have this kind of uh, lick. A solo but it doesn't have to be that way and that's a very good example of how fingers kind of take over now if you can expand that to other ranges other zones of the fretboard you, yes your fingers are still going to take over sometimes but they're going to take over and target different types of intervals different types of notes and uh, that will result in some ideas that are maybe a little different than than that maybe you'll have something like this Or maybe something like this. It sounds a little different. Now, I'm not saying that your fingers should always take over. Your mind should be directing your fingers where they need to go. But that's kind of the idea of understanding where you are within the cage system. There's more, but for now, that's what we're going to do. So the first exercise is to determine uh, a key. Um, a sound, a chord, a scale. So we'll, we'll pick G minor pentatonic that we did here. And we're going to improvise a little bit in the different positions that we have. So those positions are determined by where the root is, just like the caged system. So the most natural one for players is the one with the root on the low E string. Low, <laughs> da, 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 on the low E string. So if we're in G, that'll be low E string, third fret. And we've got a minor pentatonic built within that um, zone of the fretboard, which is, would be frets 3, 6, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3, 6, and 3, 6. We we'll play a little bit in that, and as you're doing this, visualize where the root is. So yes, there are several ones. There are three in that zone of the fretboard. There's this one. The obvious one. There's also this one, an octave higher, and this one. You need to be aware of where these are, not because I want you to land on the root. That would be very boring and um, too expected, but it's uh, a way to just know where you are uh, when you're playing. Okay, so that's that's all all there is to it. So once you're you're doing that, you're gonna visualize some chords within that zone of the fret. That one, it's the obvious one, but you can you can add some uh, extensions if you want. Um, you don't have to play all the notes at once. Just a few are enough. Just 
visualize where you are and understand where you are. Then move on to the next position. So in the next position, which is right here in that zone of the fretboard, the roots that you're going to use as your visual reference point are going to be the one that is found on the fourth string, fifth fret if you're in G, and the octave, which is the second string, eighth fret. Those are your roots, and you're going to build your position around that. variety of different chords and so forth and you do that with the five different positions it's just to get used to playing different positions and, and kind of visualize the whole thing now the chord scale exercise is just this you're gonna play the chord part of the zone of the fretboard you're in in an arpeggio form and um, you can decide how complex you want to be but we'll, we'll use four notes four note chords so we got the root the minor third the fifth and the minor seventh. And then you're going to descend your scale. So if you're pentatonic, that's your scale, but it's going to fit the same zone of the fretboard. If you want to study another scale or another mode that fits that area of the fretboard, maybe the Aeolian mode. So you ascend your arpeggio. up a little bit at the end Something like that and then you do the same thing with the next position always kind of visualizing that chord and that's what the chord scale approach is now you can do it the very scholar way like I did recommend doing when you're starting out but then be a little creative with that and and just play whatever you want basically as long as you're aware visually where these things are the arpeggio and the notes of the um, the full scale and that'll allow you to uh, do what comes next which is basically playing over multiple chords and hear the chords without having to hear the chords this requires you to understand how to play those arpeggios and the full scales, and then to go an extra step further where you're gonna imagine a chord progression. So I would recommend starting with something super simple that you, you know by heart, maybe three, four chords, or maybe the blues would be a good one. Let's, let's start with that actually. Uh, blues and A, where we have the following three chords. We have an A seven chord, a D seven, and an E7. Now these chords can be played in, in multiple areas of the fretboard. The A can be played here, but also here, or here, or here. Different ways of playing that A. So you're going to target one of these ways, one zone of the fretboard where you can visualize that chord. And then you're going to try to find the next chord of your progression. If you're in blues and A, that'll be D7 in the same zone of the fretboard. So if we have our, our starting A7 here, the D that is in that zone would be right here. And then the E7 would be right here. Right? Or if you were started here, then we have the A followed by the D. And then we have the E. So in the same zone of the fretboard. And then you start improvising with that in mind. Again, you don't need to target the note of the chord, or you don't need to land every lick on the root. That'd be really boring. But if you can visualize those chords within a zone of the fretboard and you're playing, uh, being aware of that, your music is naturally going to sound uh, more targeted, more focused, without even thinking about it, as long as you can visualize it. It's gonna sound a lot less like this. <laughs> is fine but this is fine too where you're targeting we're not targeting but visualizing things you 
kind of heard the chords there, right? Because I was just visualizing them. Now, I'm not gonna let you work on this on your own. I have a free PDF for you that is gonna help you learn these chord scales and just practice on your own. And to get that free resource, just visit the link below, enter your best email address. I'll be sending you that right away. And uh, if this was your first visit, you should subscribe because every week, three videos like this one come out helping the top players like you find your unique voice on the guitar. Develop that voice to tell your own personal, unique story. Nobody can play the way you play because nobody's out there like you. That's what I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching this. Practice well. I'll see you next time.